bilateral vocal cord paralysis, and it, it's the third most common cause of stridor in infants. In approximately 40% of cases, the bilateral vocal cord paralysis is associated with essential congenital anomalies. Meaning what? Like if they give you in the question, this kid has a, a stridor, now they give you hydrocephalus. But if they give you that the kid has a stridor with muffled voice, because vocal cords are affected and paralyzed, bilateral vocal cord paralysis, you have to rule out central cause, central CNS cause. Remember that the innervation for the vocal cords come from the recurrent laryngeal nerves, and they originate from the brain stem. And if they ask you, what's, what's next test? If they tell you, the, the, if they give you the scenario and they ask you, what's the next test? The next test is imaging of the brain, but it's a brain MRI, not a CT scan of the brain. Because knowing that the recurrent laryngeal nerve originates from the brain stem, the CT scan does not see the posterior fossa. You need the MRI to see the posterior fossa so that you can find out what type of lesion is compressing on the brain stem, where is the origin of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And that compression could be by hydrocephalus, like in our case, and that could be associated with myelomeningocele. It could be Arnold Chiari malformation, Whatever it could be, a, if it's not congenital, it could be a tumor if it's acquired. So whatever putting a pressure there, it will cause bilateral vocal cord paralysis and the imaging of choice. If they ask you, it is MRI of the brain because MRI of the brain will see the posterior fossa. Now, unilateral vocal cord paralysis, most commonly um, uh, iatrogenic, we cause it, seen more commonly on the left, and because of the longer course of the recurrent laryngeal nerve on this side. So what they will tell you in the history, this kid and the board, they could ask you the question that this kid uh, develop a strider. And usually with unilateral, because it's one vocal cord that uh, the left one is affected, it will not be that a uh, much of a strider. It will be a mild strider, and it's not that much of also of airway obstruction because the right is still working. So they give you a strider and he have a surgery in the left side of the chest because the left laryngeal recurrent, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve take a longer course in the left side of the chest. So it, most commonly they tell you he has a PDA ligation or a cardiac surgery. So a cardiac surgery or any manipulation on the left chest that lead to strider, it's a unila, it is a left, left vocal cord paralysis, um, a, uh, the most likely. And then I want you also to remember that the most a, important and a, um, a, a factor in preventing aspiration to our airway is the vocal cords. So if, if, if by any means, if anybody choke or cough in anything or liquid try to get to the airway, the vocal cord will actually close up. They will, up, they will adduct. And that will cause cyanosis and so on. So vocal cords are important in preventing aspiration. So if somebody, a, if one of the vocal cord or two of the vocal cord a, paralyze or they have paresis, they will not do that job. So there is a high risk of aspiration. So you may see aspiration with vocal cord paralysis that lead to a cough and weak and a breathy cry. I hope that makes sense too.